cheetah example, we saw a recurrence relation which was convergent. The number of cheetahs on the farm was clearly heading towards a limit. But recurrence relations can be convergent or they can be divergent. Let's look at some examples of, of basic recurrence relations which, which do a bit of both. So this first recurrence relation is un plus 1 equals 2un add 1. That is basically saying take the last value, times it by 2 and add 1. So we'll start with u0 equals 1. Now I've plotted that in a graph between minus 1000 and 1000 to give us a chance of following the values as we progress. At each iteration we're going to times the previous value by 2 and add 1. So you can see that they're gone, it's blown up. That is a sequence of numbers which is divergent. Right, let's change something then. Instead of adding one, let's take away one. So we'll, this time we'll times by three, but we'll take away one every time and that might bring it under control a little bit. We'll again start with u0 as one and we'll set it going. Times by three, take away one, times by three, it's gone. So again, it's blown up out the top of the page. That gives a divergent sequence of numbers. Let's change the other part then. Let's multiply by a negative. So this time we'll multiply by negative two and add one. So again, I've plotted u0 away down at 1. We'll times that by negative 2, add 1, let's set it free. You can see it's ping-ponging back and forward, multiplying by a negative will do that, but it's diverging in two directions. That is never coming back under control. Again, it's a divergent sequence of numbers. So in this next recurrence relation, you'll see I've changed the first value to be a fraction, it's a half. So we're going to do a half of the start value, add 5. So a half of one is a half, add five will give me five and a half, and so on and so forth. You can see I've changed my, my scale of my y-axis to be between minus 15 and 15. That maybe gives you a clue as to what is going to happen. Let's set this recurrence relation away and see what happens. So you can see pretty quickly we're starting to tend towards a limit. The recurrence relation has naturally found an equilibrium point. It is finding the point where you do half of a number and add five, it'll take you back to the same number. And if you think about what that number it's heading towards is, it must be 10. Because a half of 10 is 5, add 5 is 10. Half of 10 is 5, add 5 is 10. So that sequence has started working towards a natural limit. It's convergent. So what if we put a negative fraction in there? And I've expressed this fraction as a decimal, negative 0 0.9. Well, multiplying by negative 0 0.9 and adding 1, we'll do this. So it's ping-ponging, the way multiplying by a negative will, However, we can clearly see it's converging in. So it's converging into something which is close to a half. So hopefully from looking at those five recurrence relations, we see a pattern of when a sequence is divergent and when it's convergent. We can say for the general recurrence relation, un plus one equals a un plus b, that a limit exists if and only if the value of a is between negative one and one which you can think of as meaning the value of a is a proper fraction. So a half, a third, negative 0 0.1, negative two thirds, 0 0.4. What we have to be careful of is 1.5 will diverge. It's bigger than one. And we'll get the same thing with negative five quarters. Top heavy fractions are not proper fractions. So therefore that sequence will still diverge. But the main thing we're gonna be interested in is how do we actually calculate what the value of the limit is? Well, we can work this out fairly easily by thinking about what happens when we reach the limit. If I reach the limit and substitute it back into the recurrence relation, a times the limit add b, well, that must take me back to the limit. So in theory, if we reach the limit, it's just gonna give us the limit back out. So when you convince yourself that that's true, we can then just use basic algebra to find a formula. We'll take that al term over to the left-hand side and subtract it. So L subtract L A equals B. We spot that there's an L term in two different places here. We can take L out as a common factor. So L times one minus A equals B. So then we can reach a formula for L by dividing down. L equals B over one minus A is the limit formula that you will become familiar with. So two things to remember. A limit exists if and only if A is between minus one and one. And the way to find the limit is b over one minus a. This is 3.2, 3.2 limits. So it's in the recurrence relation chapter 
and it's the second part which is about limits of recurrence relations. So we will say for the general recurrent relation which is un plus 1 equals a un and b comma the oh, I really hope this pen isn't dying the limit is given by l equals b over 1 subtract a okay and that's a formula you're not going to be given, you're expected just to know. Okay, so memorise that. L equals B over 1 minus A, it's not hard to remember. And we'll say underneath, note, a limit exists. And this we equals with an arrow on either side, means if and only if. A limit exists if and only if A is between negative 1 and 1. So in a recurrent relation, if this value here is between negative 1 and 1, so if it's negative 0 0.1, or if it's a fifth, or four fifths, or negative 9 tenths, they're all fine. Then a limit would exist. If this value here is 6, then there will be no limit, and you won't be asked to do anything like that. Okay, let's just do an example. I'll show you the types of things you might be asked. So we'll do, I'm going to do three examples here, so this might take a wee while. Example 3.8 to a. By the way, in case you don't know, you can use the wee settings wheel on YouTube and uh, pump up the speed a bit. Do it at 1.5 speed if you think you're fast enough. Um, just a suggestion. Uh, I'm trying to go at the middle kind of pace here so that it, it fits the most people. So a recurrent relation, this pen's definitely dying, a recurrent relation is defined as I'm just going to make one up. UN plus 1 equals 0 0.6 UN minus 15. Okay, so that's the recurrence relation, which is saying you take the previous term, you times it by 0 0.6, and then you subtract 15 to get the next term. And then you would times by 0 0.6, you subtract 15. Right, so part one of the question is going to say, explain why this sequence I'm going to have to pause in a minute and change this pen explain why this sequence has a limit and we'll see why it has the limit as n tends to infinity right you don't need, really need to know what this means but uh, it sometimes comes up so I might as well put it in as n tends to infinity this just means as the number of things you do gets very, very large. So remember that graph of the cheetahs where it came down and down and down and down and down and it got to quite close to 40 but it didn't get there. That means if I did it for infinity number of years, what would the limit be? Okay, so explain why it has a limit as n tends to infinity. And part two is going to be calculate the exact Oh, the exact value of the limit. Right, I'll be right back with a different pen. Goodbye, old friend. It's been about five years. Look at the state of it. It's been a faithful servant to me. Okay, when I went to this bad boy. Right, so explain why this sequence has a limit and calculate the exact value of the limit. Okay, so those two things are basically part one saying, write this down, and part two, use this formula. So we will do solution. I hate this pen already. Solution, part one. Explain why this sequence has a limit. The answer to this type equation is always exactly the same. You write, Limit exists 
since. So two dots at the top, one at the bottom means since. Negative one is less than, and the value of a is 0 0.6. So you're really saying, I know a limit exists because that number lies between negative one and one. And that's really the bit that you're saying. Okay, that's how you know a limit exists. So part two, calculate the exact value of the limit. Well, we'll use the limit formula. It's b over one minus a. And we'll substitute in. So for this recurrence relation, this is the value of a, and this minus 15 is the value of b. So it's b over one take away a. b is minus 15 over one take away 0 0.6. So that's minus 15 over, and I reckon about a third of the people watching this video won't immediately know the answer to that one takeaway 0 0.6. So don't, don't copy these down, but I'll tell you that one takeaway 0 0.2 gives you 0 0.8, and one takeaway 0 0.9 would give you 0 0.1. So it's really just like 10 takeaway 9 is 1, 10 takeaway 2 is 8. So one takeaway 0 0.6 is 0 0.4, and you will just get used to doing those. Right, something important here. Calculate the exact value of the limit. So we have to assume this is a non-calculator question. Doesn't want you to just pump that in a calculator, it wants you to find the answer yourself. What do we not like about this? We don't like the fact that we've got a decimal fraction inside another fraction. So in order to get rid of that, we can times the top and the bottom by 10. So negative 150 over 4. And then it's just a case of simplifying this fraction. Well, 150 and 4, they both divide by 2. Half of 150 is 75. Half of 4 is 2. And that's it. That's the exact value. You could write it as 37 and a half or 37.5, but I will just leave it as an improper fraction. So the exact value of the limit is negative 75 over 2. So that's telling you if you fired that into a calculator and you kept pressing equals, 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 for a million years, you would eventually get to negative 75 over 2, or so close to it that the difference would be imperceptible. Right, let's do a second example then. This will be a wee bit different, but it's a different way to think about limits. So example 3.2b. By the way, this is your bread and butter. This is the absolute standard type of example. This is a tiny bit different, but it's just algebra. So I'm going to say the recurrence relation un plus 1 equals b un plus 7 tends to a limit of 23. Oh, that doesn't say 23, that says 28, so we'll just get rid of that. Tends to a limit of 23 as n tends to infinity. I wrote 28 because I was thinking about my infinity symbol. So the recurrence relation un plus 1 equals bun plus 7 tends to a limit of 23 as n tends to infinity. So for a very large numbers of presses of the equals button, the recurrent relation will end up giving you 23, is what that's saying. And it's going to say, find the value of b. Okay, so just quite a straightforward setup. It's telling you you've got this recurrent relation, you don't know what the value of a is, you don't know what the value in here is. I'm saying the value of a, the value of b, it doesn't really matter what we call it. This unknown multiplier but we know that this unknown multiplier gives us a limit of 23. Right, so I'll start the solution on this side and then I'll have to flip over because we'll run out of space. But we'll get a starting point here. Right, so we're going to use our limit formula. L equals B over one minus A. Now we must not confuse our variables here, or our unknowns, I should say. This B is not that B. So when I substitute into the formula, this b is referring to 
the, the loose term at the end here, so it's 7 in this case, over 1 minus, this is our value of a, so I'll put in b there, and the limit of the sequence is 23. So I can put a 23 in there. So this is the equation that we have to solve, and I'll do that over the page. 23 equals 7 over 1 take away b. So we are solving 23 equals 7 over 1 take away b, and we're trying to solve to find the value of b. Well, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to take the 1 minus b denominator, and we'll multiply it up to the other side. So it'll become 23 multiplied by 1 minus b equals 7. Times out that bracket, you'll get, I'm just going to start doing it on line by line now, 23 subtract 23b equals 7. That means negative 23b is going to be equal to 7 subtract 23, and 7 subtract 23 is negative 16. So to get the value of b, I will divide by negative 23. So that's negative 16 divided by negative 23. So the value of b is 16 20 thirds. And we knew it was probably going to be a fraction because we knew there was a limit. So it had to be between minus 1 and 1. So b is 16 20 thirds. Right, third example, and I'm putting this example in to give you a bit of meat because this is the kind of thing you'll probably get asked in an exam. Example 3.2c, so this is the kind of meaty thing you might see. You're going to have to write a big story here. Uh, so here we go. A patient is injected, injected, that's not an I, that's an E, injected with 180 millilitres of a certain drug. I've got no idea if that's realistic or not, it sounds like quite a lot. 180 millilitres, that's like, what, like half a can of coke? Um, but anyway, they're injected, imagine they've got a drip in, okay, so they're injected with 180 mils of a certain drug. I'm going to say every hour, 20% of the drug passes out of her bloodstream. That was the big reveal there. The patient was actually a her. So 20% passes out of her bloodstream. She might sweat it out. She might pee it out. It doesn't really matter, but 20% is gone. Okay, every hour that happens. Uh, to compensate... To compensate for this... She is administered... Administered with a further 30 millilitres each hour. Okay, so there's a situation. She's hit with a big dose to start with. That's how she starts off. But every hour we know 20% is going to be gone. So to compensate for this, she's given a further top up every hour. 30 mils, 30 mils, 30 mils, 30 mils. That should be making you think of the cheetah example. You lose 20%, we add 30 mils. You lose 20%, we add 30 mils. Right, so part one is going to be create a recurrence relation. I'm just going to leave it at that, create a recurrence relation to represent this situation or something, but I'm just going to write that. Uh, for part two, uh, we'll say what the volume of the drug remains after four hours. And then part three is going to say a 
a what volume of drug should the doctors expect to see in the patient's bloodstream in the long term? Okay. Sorry, that's a lot of writing. So we're going to make a recurrence relation. We're then going to work out what volume of the drug remains after four hours. And we're going to say what volume of the drug will there be in the long term. Right, so three different things we're going to do here. But it shouldn't take too much space. I should be able to squeeze it into this page, I think. Right, so a solution. Part one. Well... She's injected, blah, 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 blah. Uh, to get the first bit of the recurrence relation, we're always looking for the percentage. We're looking for the thing that's gone up and down by a percentage or a fraction. So 20% of the drug passes out of her bloodstream. So is it going up or down by 20%? You should be saying down by 20%. So 100% is what we start with. And it goes down by 20%. So that leaves us with 80%, which is equivalent to 0 0.8 as a decimal. Right, that is exactly the same as a depreciation question at Nat 5, that we process there. It's going down by 20%, so you get 0 0.8. Right, so my recurrence relation is going to be UN plus 1 equals, that's my first number, that's my value of A, 0 0.8 UN. And then what else happens every hour? To compensate for this, she is ministered with a further 30 mils each hour. So are we adding 30 mils or are we taking away 30 mils each hour? We are adding 30 mils each hour, so plus 30 so that's my recurrence relation. Each hour we times by 0 0.8, we add 30. And just for a wee bit of flair, I am also going to add in u0, because I know what the starting value was. How much was she hit with in the first place? 180 mils. So u0 is 180. Okay. Boom, there's our answer. There's my recurrence relation there. Right, part two. What volume of the drug remains after four hours? Well, I know how much they're started with. Let's work out after one hour. So I'm just going to process the recurrence relation to get one, and then I'll get U2, I'll get U3, I'll get U4. So to get U1, it'll be 0 0.8 times 180, add 30. Well, 0 0.8 times 180... Uh, is going to be the same as, well, 8 times 18 is 80, add 64, uh, which is 144. Uh, divide it by that, to add, so I'm dividing it by 10 and times by 10, so it's 144, add 30, so it's 174. So after one hour, there's going to be 174 mils. Uh, to get U2, I'm not going to write out the working for this. To get U2, it's 0 0.8 times this, add 30. So it will be... 0 0.8 times 174, add 30, and that gives me 169.2 mils. After the third hour, 0 0.8 times the answer from that, plus 30. That gives me 165.36. So after four hours, it'll be that one more time, 162 and I'll round that to 0.29 milliliters. So we will say after four hours, 162.29 milliliters remains. I'll put my double underline over here. Right, last bit. What volume of the drug should the doctor expect to see in the long term? Right, so this is the bit where some people are tempted because they've started this to just keep going. To go, oh well, the long term, how many hours is that? I'll sit and I'll press equal 100 times and I'll see where it goes to. So you can do that and that might give you a clue. So you might think, 
Well, look, it's heading for 150, is it? Let's just see. Looks like it. Looks like it's heading for 150. However, I can't press equals enough times. Well, you probably could, but it's only because your calculator would run out of rounding. Um, it will never actually get to 150. If it ever says the long term, the question's asking you to calculate the limit. So to do this, I want you to do L equals B over 1 subtract A. We are going to work out the limit of this recurrence relation. The value of B is 30 over 1 take away 0 0.8. So if you're someone that was struggling before with 1 take away 0 0.6, you should be saying to me just now that 1 take away 0 0.8 is 0 0.2. I can't do that in my head, but I can times the top and the bottom by 10 to get 300 over 2. And 300 over 2 works out to be 150 millilitres in the long term. Okay, so they're expecting the amount of drug to balance out or to level out at about 150 mils in the long term. Super.